My name is Jake Freestone and I'm the farm manager at Overbury and I want to just make this video on the back of yesterday's vote by the European Union not to re-register glyphosate as an active ingredient for European farmers. I just want to tell you a little bit about why I feel so strongly that that was the wrong decision. And there's no better way to do that than giving you a very, very graphic demonstration about how two different types of field management affect the environment in which we all live and work and where we grow our food. We have two fields here. On the right hand side we have trouters. This was last cultivated to any sort of depth in 2013. Since then it has grown a crop of spring barley, then oilseed rape, then winter wheat. It then had a cover crop over winter before we planted peas, before then going into wheat and now we have a cover crop planted over this winter before it goes into soya beans next spring. On the other side of the track we have gravels. This is a field since 2013 has grown oilseed rape, wheat, potatoes, wheat, onions and has just been planted with wheat again. Ironically probably generating a higher income for us per hectare than the field adjacent to it. This is about glyphosate. It's a very, very safe product, a safe uh, molecule, according to the World Health Organization, the European Food Safety Authority, and many other global well-respected bodies. But I want you want to take you into the field to show you from a farmer's point of view, how this no-tilling method of farming is gonna help the environment. Michael Gove said just on Monday that we have between 30 or 40 harvests left. We need to protect and look after our soil. You tell me whether this is a better way of managing our soil or this is a better way of managing our soil. Bear with me for a couple of minutes and I'll tell you why this is the way we should be farming and with the use of glyphosate this makes it possible. This crop was established using 13 litres of diesel. Its neighbour used over 70. So in terms of carbon dioxide released, we're looking at around 40 kilos of carbon dioxide here versus 180 over here. So immediately we are providing or producing less greenhouse emissions. But the story goes a lot deeper than that. Here we have, it's a mixed cover crop. We have vetches, we have phacelia that's in flower. It's the 26th of October and we have pollinator supplies in here. We have buckwheat in here that has been flowering. This is a habitat that is alive. The green plants are capturing sunshine. They're growing leaves, stems, and very importantly, roots to put into the ground to fix nitrogen in the case of vetches, meaning I will need to use less nitrogen for the following crop. It's got rye grass, rye, forage rye in here as well, which we can use to graze our sheep on. And the soil is alive. It is full of worms, of insects, and also roots. Very, very important to get that root structure in place. Roots hold the soil together. They exclude sugars, and that feeds the bacteria, the fungi, which in turn feed the earthworms, which create the drainage channels. I want to just demonstrate that with this litre of water. So we will just go across here. So we've, so we've already ascertained that this is good for the soil. We're putting carbon into the soil and I'm just going to find a random bit off the headland tram lines. But look, it's stuffed full of flowers and vegetation. It's organic matter that we're growing. And this is taking carbon out of the soil, sorry, out of the atmosphere and putting it into the soil. So here we have, I'm just trying to find the soil here. Uh, there is the soil. There is my, my litre of water. I've poured a litre of water into about a 15 centimetre square patch and it's just disappeared. We're talking infiltration, we're talking 
flood risk reduction further downstream. We're growing a sponge. We're growing a sponge full of organic matter that can store water for dry periods. There is no doubt climate change is happening. This is how we can mitigate it, mitigate against it. The four per 1,000 um, report that the government has signed up for um, says that we can reduce the amount of carbon in the atmosphere by increasing our soil organic matter by just 0.04 of a percent. And that is a way that we can do it. The field behind us will just be sprayed with glyphosate and then planted straight into. So we'll release another uh, 40 kilos of carbon dioxide and that's it, um, CO2 in terms of our fuel use. And here we are into gravels. So this has been worked heavily. Here is the soil. It's a medium for growing things, as you can see here. There's the wheat that's just coming up, but there's nothing else. Very little soil life. This will need more fertilizer. It will need more pesticides. And in terms of soil structure, here is another liter of water. That is where we get runoff from these fields. Yes, it's soaked in a little bit, but nowhere near as well as the no-till scenario. So we put pressure on the governments of Germany and France and the other European unions that refused to back glyphosate um, because I feel that that is totally the wrong way to go to make a sustainable farming system based on looking after our soil, not just making it sustainable, but regenerating it, adding life to it. And that, I hope, gives some demonstration of uh, how we farm here at Overbury and also my vision for UK agriculture in the future.